Hello and welcome to Tonalist Paintings by M. Francis McCarthy. This is our fourth uh, blogcast uh, since we uh, completed, completed our series, uh, 100 Days of Tonalism. And uh, the painting we're doing today is called Arcadian Road. We did the study uh, on Wednesday, which was about three or four days ago. Uh, this is November um, 2015 for uh, those of you that are not, um, you know, existing in the present with me and uh, are curious as to when this was uh, done. I think today I'm just going to kind of follow along with the uh, the painting. As you can see, I'm doing my drawing right now, and um, this is interesting because uh, it's one of the first uh, 10x14s I've, I've done, and 10x14 is a big jump up in size for me uh, from I just I did a whole like years worth of 8 by 10s and previous to that I've done a lot of smaller work and I'm very comfortable with the smaller sizes and uh, I know that a lot of the reason is, is uh, if you look at uh, one of my recent blog posts I talked about how I like to indicate not delineate in my work and that is uh, a lot easier for me to do it to small size with a big brush since you know you don't have a lot of room to move um, it's it's very tempting when I get into the larger sizes to really start doing a lot of um, excessive detail I think one of the, the uh, strategies that I've come up with uh, at least in the work I've been doing um, very recently uh, the last series of paintings I did in this current uh, series is that um, Instead of doing a lot of detail, I've been going in with a dry brush and sort of doing some texturing, and that seems to be uh, keeping the, the work uh, sort of fresh, but at the same time allowing me to express myself a little more fully. Um, anyway, you can see uh, in the video here that I moved into my first color pass, what I like to call it, and uh, a lot of times I'll lay in the blue first, that's what I did here, uh, blues and then grays. And, uh, you know, funny enough, uh, when I talk about using large brushes, it always feels like I'm probably using a number 8 here on this painting. And uh, I have a few number 10s, but when I go to work with them, they just seem really big. However, it's a weird phenomenon. When I watch these videos, I think, oh, I could use a bigger brush. I could use a bigger brush. And uh, I'm endeavoring to do that, folks. I'm always endeavoring to, to get work with a larger brush, especially as I'm scaling works up, I, you know, I sort of have a plan in my mind uh, as I, uh, you know, uh, become progressively more successful as a landscape painter to uh, to keep working larger and larger and larger uh, until I'm doing, you know, pieces at the end of my life that are like, you know, 80 inches across and 40 inches high and things like that, so... Anyway, um, a lot of times you can see I'm doing the road now, and lots of times I will do the road prior to doing, um, just because so many of the tones are uh, in the same sort of uh, sphere as the uh, sky colors. It's generally grays or brownish grays, but it's very easy for me to use a brush that has a sky mixture in it. I don't have to uh, pick up and make a change where... Um, what I would normally do once I was done with the uh, laying in the sky and the uh, and a road or a river, if that was with the, in the painting, um, I would generally pick up a whole nother brush and do what I'm doing now, which is start laying in darks. And uh, this is, uh, I think I talked about this a bit on the 5 by 7 I like to lay in the darks. Uh, you'll see in some of the... Uh, the paintings I'm going to do as uh, we progress through into the future here. Um, there are times when I go in and lay in the mid-tone of greens and things and then spot the darks on top, but I have been experimenting with it and, um, you know, I go back and forth and uh, I think it's good to, tr to, to use both. I, I, having experimented though with laying in the medium tones and then spotting the darks on top, I, I have a better feeling, I think, from having the darks in first in that uh, they become a little more integrated and it feels less spotty. It feels like, um, you know, when I have a field of color laid down and I go, go in and jab a dark splotch on top of it, it's a lot of more work to integrate that than if I have darks underneath those uh, medium tones. 
um, you know, and uh, speaking medium tones, you can see I'm filling in a bunch of medium tones now. So, um, here I'm, I'm actually, and one of the things that I like to do um, a lot of, as you can see in that group of trees on the left, I've done a, uh, a color modulation. One of my favorite words when it comes to painting is modulation and modulating color. But anyway, I've modulated from a green on the far left into a ochreish uh, orange sort of tone on the right rightmost portion of that uh, background clump of trees and uh, one of the uh, you know I've talked I might have act I don't I haven't written the blog post for this video today but I may talk a bit about my uh, my decision to use the uh, burnt sienna as a ground color and uh, its history um, this is something if you look at my initial blog uh, I think it's just called M Francis McCarthy on uh, you know on uh, blogger it's something I never I never talked about there I always held that one juicy bit of information back from you wonderful uh, people out there and uh, you know frankly this is my my me giving back to the world and sharing my work and sharing my techniques and it's you know there's always a tendency when you work very hard to learn something that you feel oh well people are gonna take it and, you know I don't know either not appreciated or uh, you just know that it costs you so much to learn what you've done that you you feel like it shouldn't be given away for free but um, you know I've come to terms with that and I had it's one of the things I had to come to terms with when I uh, first started the hundred days of uh, tonalism and uh, made a decision to actually put my videos online I hadn't actually fully you know come to an acknowledgement at least internally that I was going to do that and so um, like I said I'm giving I'm giving back to the world if you're interested and you're enjoying this then that's uh, that's great and uh, get out there and paint and do your best and uh, you know if I was able to help you in any way um, in fact I have to you know I have written about Stapleton Kearns before and uh, back when I was first starting painting I got a heck of a lot of information from that guy and he didn't hold back anything he is unstinting and in sharing information that he's learned and uh, I've taken a lesson from people like him and uh, I, I'm doing the same and I will continue to for the foreseeable future you know um, anyway uh, you can see now I've probably gone into my second pass I can clearly tell because you can see I'm refining things in this in the clouds and I got my knife out and this is something uh, these days where I'm doing probably less uh, like you can see I've injected quite a bit of detail up in those clouds and um, these days I would uh, maybe try and just lay things in with the side of that brush over my textured panel and that's one thing that's a bit different here and maybe we'll talk about that uh, next week when we get into another subject in fact I'm thinking of doing something very recent next week so Anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end, so hey, thanks for joining us for day four in Arcadian Road, uh, 10 by 14. Um, if you want to see more of my work, go to landscapepainter.co.nz. Uh, there's a lot of paintings there. If you'd like to contact me, there's also an email address there. Just click on that and be, send me an email, or you can leave a comment on here on the YouTube. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.